Now to the biggest story in the state tonight, a debate seen all over Michigan. The four Republican candidates for governor battling it out in a debate to earn your vote. The only place to see it live in West Michigan, Wood TV 8. Tonight we have wall-to-wall -wall post debate coverage. We're talking with the candidates about their performance, with undecided voters about their thoughts, and we're looking ahead at what's next for the race. We'll get to our team in just moments, but first, a look at some of the highlights from tonight's debate. One of the topics that got the candidates talking, their support for President Trump. I am grateful for the support and endorsement of my campaign for governor by President Trump. Brian, you, you deserted Trump and the president knows who was with him and who was not. I mean, even Bill Schuette served as the campaign chairperson for Jeb Bush. Used the word deplorable on Donald Trump before Hillary even did. But still, we all got there when it counted the most. And so as we move forward, it's about working together on shared priorities. The only time I've ever seen the Attorney General go off and support President Trump is when President Trump's in town or Vice President Pence is in town. I'm actually out there with the grassroots, actually rallying the base, making sure that we've got President Trump six. Brian Kelly did withdraw his support from Trump, you know, several weeks before the general election. I'm so sorry he did that. I, I was so disappointed. Uh, Bill Schuette, Trump was not his first choice. Well, Michigan's future is about more jobs and bigger paychecks, and I intend to be Michigan's jobs governor. And President Trump has endorsed me for governor because he knows I'll cut taxes in Michigan like he's cut taxes across America. We have an important choice in front of us today. Do we continue this historic Michigan comeback that we've been on, or do we turn back to the career politicians of the past? If we're going to buck this eight-year cycle we seem to be trapped in where we have a Republican governor for eight years and we have a Democratic governor for eight years, we need to stop, uh, we need to stop painting in pale pastels. We need bold colors. I guess the simple question I have for you gentlemen is, what have you been doing the last eight, 12, and 34 years? I believe that we need an outsider with fresh ideas, new ideas that they can bring into the political arena to solve these problems. All right, so we kick off our team coverage with 24-Hour News 8's Evan Dean. Evan was the only reporter to go one-on-one -on -one with each candidate immediately after tonight's debate to see how they thought they fared. Evan. O'Brien and Marley, no surprise here. Each candidate thought they were big winners tonight, succeeding in what they set out to do in the first GOP debate. I'm Dr. Jim Hines. For Dr. Jim Hines, a self-proclaimed outsider, tonight's goal was as simple as establishing himself to voters statewide. You've acknowledged you've got a lot of work to do and that you've got catching up to do. Do you feel you caught up tonight? Oh, we're not caught up. I, it was just an opportunity for the people of this state to see Jim Hines. As to if he can catch up by August. Absolutely. Uh, we're confident that we can. State Senator Patrick Kolbeck also recognizes there are two more well-known names in this year's race. This, a chance to put himself firmly on the map. Do you feel like you did that tonight? Uh, I think we did a good job. A couple of the issues that I really wish we would have talked about are the elimination of the state personal income tax and the senior pension tax. My plan to actually go off and fix the roads by focusing on quality, not just throwing more money at it. But uh, we'll, we should get some more opportunities as the time goes on. While much of the debate was focused on each candidate's respective goals, there were no doubt jabs thrown. Bill Schuette will literally say or do anything to get elected. Lieutenant Governor Brian Kelly was the only candidate to use his rebuttals. And in both, he criticized Attorney General Bill Schuette. Do you feel you were effective in doing that? I think it's just important that people know the facts. He's been hiding, been hiding for so long. The people of this state deserve to have answers about where we go from here. Not platitudes and certainly not dodging town halls and debates like he has been. Do you feel you responded well to that? Well, you know what? I don't worry about that. Uh, you know, he's behind, desperately behind, and it's because he has a record of supporting tax increases. It's all about the future. It's a, about we can't go back because we can't afford, you know, the, the uh, Whitmer and the Democrats. So that's just a small part of our interviews with the candidates. We'll have much more on WoodTV.com also tomorrow morning on Daybreak. Brian and Marley. All right, Evan, thank you. All of the candidates had one big goal, and that's getting your vote when the primary elections happen in August. We wanted to know how they fared among the Republican faithful. So we assembled a group of undecided voters who watched the debate with them and in our Media Arts Center. 24 Hour News 8's Leon Hendricks has what they had to say tonight. 
Brian and Marley, good evening to both of you. The group of six we spoke with ranged in age from 26 to 83. Going into the debate, they said they weren't sure who they were supporting. But coming out of the debate, they all said they came out with a favorite, all but two. They watched intently as the candidates debated all four for the first time, and everyone in the room saw something they liked. If, if I could roll all of them in and make a lot of the qualities, <laughs> that would be great. The six people we interviewed are all from Kent County. They vote, and they've actively participated in campaigns in the past. They said they wanted to see substance. The whole system is messed up. You know, let's get these roads fixed. And most of those in the room say they found it from lesser-known candidates, State Senator Patrick Kolbeck and Dr. Jim Hines. Everybody thought it'd be between Kelly and Shooty at this point in time, but now we get a fresh look at a Colbeck and a Hines yeah. with some different ideas. I was just turned off by the fact that Kelly's answers just seemed so memorized. Yeah. What they all seemed to not like was the jabs back and forth between Lieutenant Governor Brian Kelly and Attorney General Bill Schuette. No, no, because it was almost as if the other two candidates yeah. weren't even there, like they didn't exist. Trump supporters, all but one. But most said they were sick of hearing about the president's endorsement choice time and time again. It was that a turn off for everybody? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's like, we know. Yeah, he's like, he played the Trump card. Play the Trump card. You know what? Just... That, it didn't turn me off at all. The guy had an advantage, and he, and he took advantage oh, of it. Okay. And yeah. I say more power to him. While they were not in agreement on any one candidate, their consensus on one question, perhaps a success for all of the candidates in tonight's debate. Is there any chance that any of you would vote for the Democrat candidate? Oh. No. No. Nope. <laughs> now, the group we put together was not done scientifically. We make no claims that they represent the views of the Republican Party or even the party faithful. They did key in on a couple of soft skills regarding some of the candidates. They said they recognized how polished that Callie and Shooty were. They said that was actually a turnoff. They felt that the other two candidates came off as more sincere. Reporting live at the Media Arts Center tonight, Leon Hendricks, 24-Hour News 8. As soon as our debate coverage wrapped, we got a response from the Democratic Party of Michigan. Their response says in part, if Michigan voters want a politician who will bow down to Donald Trump and be a third term of Rick Snyder's failures, tonight's Republican debate was the place to look. In contrast, Michigan Democrats want to shake up Lansing to work for Michigan's middle class, finally fix our failing roads and schools, and ensure that our veterans, drinking water, and the health and well-being of entire cities take priority again. Now, our political reporter Rick Albin was right in the middle of tonight's debate. All right, Rick, where do we go from here? We go into a campaign, a sprint to August 7th. We're Republicans tonight, we're working with Democrats to have them in the same kind of forum. And the reason we're doing this is because this is an important election and there are gonna be a lot of new faces in Lansing. We talked about this earlier this evening. There'll be a new governor, lieutenant governor, secretary of state, and as well as an attorney general. 75% of the Senate, 40 plus members in the House will be gone. And all of those new faces mean that there will be less experience in Lansing on January 1st than there is tonight on May 9th. So the question is, who will those new people be? And at the top of the ticket, whoever will be running for governor will have an input on that. Now, it's not just going to be about Republicans and Democrats, as you know. Libertarians are going to have a primary as well. We give as much exposure as possible to all those folks out there and try to get as many ideas shared. One of the real challenges, as you saw tonight, four candidates, one hour, how many questions can you get in? I, I will say they did a great job trying mm -hmm. to stick to the time. As I say, we've been negotiating with the Democrats, and I'm very confident we'll be able to get something put together with them. We'll also have the Libertarians on. This is one of those big elections that we're going to do as much as we can to get as much information out as we can, because ultimately it really is going to be important to Michigan. Yeah, as you mentioned, so much is changing. Yeah, it's going to be a big change election. And again, that's not about changing one party to another, just a lot of changing faces, Absolutely. because it's inevitable because of term limits. Yeah. Rick Albin, thank you. Now, if you missed a minute of the debate tonight, we do have you covered. You can watch the entire debate right now on woodtv.com. Now, before tonight's debate, protesters gathered outside our studio. Around 50 people showed up to voice their concerns with the GOP candidates. 24-hour News 8 Zach Horner was out talking with that group to learn what message they wanted to send to the candidates. Zach.
Well, Brian and Marley, a lively crowd outside the studio tonight gathering to make sure Republican Governor Hopefuls heard them loud and clear. I'm told it was a mix of several different groups, but all with a similar message. Many focused on health care, others focused on veterans' rights. Speeches were made, chants of unity heard, and marching together for a common cause. It was democracy in action tonight. Republicans inside looking for votes in West Michigan come November, and the protesters, many of whom I spoke with, identify as Democrat, airing their concerns about the Republican candidates and saying what they want out of their next governor. Making health care affordable for everyone, not just the rich. Making it affordable for the, for the poor and the homeless. Everyone. I have issues with Bill Schuette. As a veteran, um, I've seen personally what's gone on with the Grand Rapids Home for Veterans. I was in favor of privatizing the Grand Rapids Home for Veterans and then, uh, then went on uh, to tell veterans if they didn't like it, they could just go. So I think it's very important that we show up and tell Bill Schuette and all the other Republican candidates that we do not accept their cuts to Medicaid. We think it's very important that we protect health care for those who are, those who are most in now police were on hand, but there weren't any incidents. After a few hours, the crowd left peacefully before the debate even started. In studio tonight, I'm Zach Horner, 24-hour News 8.